Hi, my name is Beyhan. I am an SAP consultant. And in this video, I would like to show you how to create a REST API endpoint on SAP ABAP stack. For that, we will be creating a service and in service, we'll be passing over custom HTTP handler. And then we will be managing all REST API requests on this handler. For that, I have a blog post on SAP community. I will be sharing this blog URL under the video description so you can follow exact steps as well. As an addition, I will also show how to do MVC1 routing. That means we will be creating only one single endpoint, only one API. And with this API, we will be managing multiple requests simply by distinguishing between request ID. So this will be kind of homemade framework for to manage requests. This is called MVC1 routing. First, I have seen this one on Java Stars framework and I liked it very much. It is quite simple. If you want, you can manage the request mapping via table and you can automate it instead of hard coding. But just to keep it simple, I will show you how to do it with simple if conditions. So if we start, first of all, we will be creating three structures for our requests and responses. And then we will be creating five classes and also we will need a message class. We will be using this REST API endpoint on Vue application as well. I have published a video about how to create Vue.js app and how to deploy it to SAP ABAP. And we will see how to use REST API from SAP on this Vue application. Instead of Fiori or Data Combination, you can use REST API and Vue Combination. So this will be part of this Vue series. Okay, let's start creating our first structure. We'll start with this one, response state. Go to AC80. Here, choose package. I will be placing all my items under the REST package. Okay, so right click to package, create dictionary object, structure, give a description. Our structure will have two fields, and you can see them here. It is state and state takes, and the component types we need to create data elements, uh, we will name like this, and their type is char1 and char200. Double click to create the data elements. Data element. with control F3. Create the second data element for state takes. And activate the structure. Second is response. And it will have body and state. Body is string and state is state, the previous object we have created. We just need to create the first dot element. And the domain is string. And we need to create our final structure. It will have ID and body. And activate our final structure. Now we will continue with creating classes. So our first class is this one contains the definitions that will be used in the whole application. So it is about returning state of the state status. It doesn't need to be final. Source code based. This, will, this class will contain business logic and it will return the business data. 
So any request will finally come to this. You may have multiple model classes. In this example, we will have one. This is the class we will be passing to the service and here there is an important bit. You just need to redefine this handle CSRF token which is cross-site forgery. If you make a request outside of SAP, let's say from Postman or, for, or from a third-party application, you will have the warning of cross-site forgery and you can check it online. So to disable this security check, you just need to create an empty definition of this handle CSRF token method. So now the next step is creating the service. To create the service, we need to open transaction SICF. Run. And we need to add our service under SAP BC REST. Pay attention to this URL because you will see this URL in the URL of our web service as well. REST is here, it is not active, we will just activate it, yes, and we will add our new sub element here, it will be Z rests, yeah. and description, REST that we call, service, and for logon data, we won't be passing any username or password here, that means each time when we make a request to this service, we need to provide username and password. If I enter any username and password, service won't be asking any username and password, but always it will go with the same username. So we don't want that. In our case, we want it with basic authentication. An important step in the handler, we just need to pass one of our classes, which is HTTP handler. If I go to my classes, I need to pass the name of this class and this class is just inheriting from CRS HTTP handler and redefining some of the interface get root handler and handle CSRF token. All the requests coming to our web service, it will be going through the get root handler method. And here we say if any request goes like slash rest and just direct them to this CL request HTTP handler class, which is another class here. And in this class, if it is get, it will be handled in the get method. If it is post request, it will be handled in the post request. In our case, we will be handling get and post in the same, we will be handling in same request control class, which is ZRSCR request controller. As you can see in post and get, it is the same one. And process request method will be called once request reaches here. We will be converting JSON data to the structure. Remember, we have created a structure, request structure. It has an ID and body. ID is just a distinguish between the request and body may contain any type of JSON data depending on the ID. It might be just a single field or it might be a complex data type. We will see what I mean in the debug mode. And uh, we are going back to our service. Here in the handler, I will just pass the name of the uh, request handler, which is ZRSCL HTTP handler, press enter, and just save it. Our REST API is ready to test. We just need to activate it first. Come here to ZRest, activate, say yes, and right click to ZRest and test service. As I mentioned, we didn't provide any username and password, so we just need to pass the username and password that we want to log on to this API. It is on my development system, so the username, developer, and password do not. 
And if you want to install your own development system, you can go to the uh, Kozen YouTube page and here you can find how to install SAP Netweaver Just add a new edition. So here, sign in and it says no suitable research found. That's because this is the direct URL of our service. Remember, we were creating our service under SAP BC REST, but in the handler, we said we'll be handling only the request that comes as slash REST. Let me show what I mean. If you go to HTTP handler, here in the get root handler, we say if any request comes like slash REST, then forward it to this class. You can see a sample URL here. So if you go to browser back, and if I just write here, slash capital R REST, it is case sensitive. And press enter. The response that came from our controller class says it's a warning. And actually that means invalid request. We didn't create the message class. Let's create the message class and see what exactly it says. So I will just double click on this line. It is asking me to create. So if I make my request one more time by pressing enter, this time it says invalid request. And the correct form of request is it should be with the JSON object and it should contain an ID. Here, if you go to get root handler methods, you can just copy this one. I will copy this and paste it to the browser. See, this time we got date time because we have requested ID. 1001 and if we debug what happens to this request how we got this response we will just put a debug point in our request controller in the process request method here i have set an external debug point and i will press enter again here to send. we are making a get request here we are passing all the data square string after this i will show you how to do get and post request on postman as well uh, it just opened the debugger window for us. So this is the call stack, how our request came here. First it started with the standard SAP classes, then it just passed our HTTP handler. So if I come to here, it says it is directed to the GET method. That's because we made a GET request and it just passed it to our GET method. And then we just requested it to pass to this class to the process request method. So in process request method we are now, we got this JSON string. If I show you the JSON string, this is the JSON string. It is exactly the same thing that we have sent in the request parameter here. This is the request parameter and this is the JSON. And then we are just passing this JSON to our structure. Remember we have created this request structure so our request structure is filled with ID and some JSON content. In 1001 request, we are not using JSON, but I am just adding this data just to show you how we get the JSON. Since the request is 1001, we just continue. Now we are creating our REST model. This part is just pure basic above. So after that point, you are free to do whatever you want. I am not writing business logic in that bit. I am just passing it to another method. So this request will be handled by the ZREST CR model class. And it says if the request is 1001, then just go here. And in get date time method, we are just getting uh, current stamp time. And then we are just returning it. So the state is success and the response body is date time. So if I press F8, so we got our response in the browser. If we want to do the exact same thing on Postman, we just go to Postman. Here, I will first show you the get method. I will pass the same URL here. And in authorization, we just need to choose basic authentication, pass the username and password. This is development system. This is default password, don't not one. And if I say send, so this is the response we got. Now I want to show you the post method. Just the difference is we are not sending our 
parameters with query string we will be passing them in the body of the request so we will just come here instead of writing it here as a query string we will pass them here in the body and i will press send again response is exact same but there's a difference this time it didn't go through with the get method this time it came from the post method if i put the debug point again if i go to postman if i click send external debug point sorry postman press send this time it will open a debug point see if we go here this time it comes from the post method not from the get method previously it was coming from the get but this is a post request and with the rest you can uh, use put delete head and options kind of uh, requests and you can see them in this interface as well so you can use these methods but i will be on using post and get so this is actually how it works i will press f8 again this is the response authorization is exact same so that's it this is how you can create a rest api endpoint and how you can manage multiple requests from single request controller we will be using this rest api endpoint in our Vue application i have published a video on how to create a Vue application and how to publish it to sap above netweaver so instead of using fiori and all data combination we can use vue.js and rest api combination i hope this video is helpful for you if you enjoyed this video don't forget to click like and subscribe my channel Thanks for watching.